Eddie Chavez. Ruben Nava. And Jesse Romero. Jesus 911. Good morning, Jesus 911, Virgin Most Powerful Radio. Two man car, we are 10 8. Jesse and I are uh, going to bring you a, a show packed with some good intel. And um, Jesse, this we're seeing what's raging all across the nation, and there's a, a concerted effort. This is a, a, a running, a kind of a well run organization that's trying to take down our government and, and absolutely and capitalism as we know it and and uh, insert communism and, and uh <laughs> <laughs> yeah and yeah exactly <laughs> replace it with communism wow it's uh no, that's what we have we really, as they say in spanish in, in uh, mexico ni mas ni menos that's exactly what we have here yeah. no more no less hey, let's start, Ruben, let, let, let's yeah let's start off first of all with what happened in germany during world war ii because when we take a look at that, we're going to understand what's happening here in the United States with Antifa. That's who we're going to target right now. Yeah. Hitler did the same thing, Ruben, yeah. in order to take down his opposition. And uh, in, in, it, was, it was called basically the, the brown shirts. In German, they called it Sturma Teilung. But we're not going to be saying that Sturma Teilung. Uh, it literally means a storm unit in English. Or uh, it'll be easier for us just to say the brown shirts. They were this group of specialized troops under Imperial Germany. They were under Hitler. And he assembled them to intimidate his political opponents, much like we have today. Right. So Hitler, what he did, he got all these, uh, you know, these uh, frustrated, unemployed veteran soldiers to assemble this unofficial army of thugs known as the, we'll just call them simple, brown shirts to intimidate his political opponents and to protect the early Nazi party as they were starting. This is exactly the parallel that's happening right now. Now, without the intimidation of the brown shirts, Hitler's rise to power would have been very, very difficult, historians admit. And so after World War I, the country was filled with resent and despair, and the, the country was hindered by the, the crippling demands of the Versailles Treaty, and they were forced to pay reparations for the entire war. They weren't happy. Right. So the army, which had been a source of national pride in Germany, it was limited to, not, to, to a mere 100,000 men as assurance that those mighty forces would not rise again. And so various factions in Germany attempted to exploit the dissent within the country, with the two most influential being the communists, which were inspired by the revolu revolution in Russia, and the fascist who took inspiration from Mussolini in Italy. So during the days of the Weimar Republic in Germany, tension between the communists and the fascists erupted into violence in the streets. And so in 1921, Adolf Hitler, who formally organized some of his thugs who had been fighting on the streets, he organized them into a paramilitary organization, much like Antifa and Black Lives Matter. And they were called in German the storm the storm unit. We'll just call them the brown shirts. That that's, was a, that was their informal name. They're a paramilitary group, and they were clad in brown uniforms, similar to the fascists of Italy. And these stormtroopers consisted mainly of disgruntled ex-soldiers, now forbidden to enter the Germans' army. And initially, they acted as as uh, Nazi bodyguards and aggressors against those who oppose their party. Again, parallel experience to what we're seeing with Antifa and the relationship with the Democrat Party. But the brown shirts, mm -hmm. these guys were forced to temporarily disband after a plot that was known as the Munich, Munich Beer Hall Putsch to take over the Bavarian government in Germany, and it failed. And so authorities then cracked down on the, on the brown shirts and put Hitler behind bars in 1923. And the Great Depression... Uh, would soon provide the stormtroopers with a tremendous opportunity. You want to pick it up from there, Ruben? Yeah. yeah just going back to uh, what that Treaty of Versailles, that was that uh, treaty that happened right after World War I where the Allied troops, you know, they uh, they levied uh, Germany and they, they 
deemed them responsible and they 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 taxed them or they put a, a billions of dollars that they had to pay in reparations and Germany wasn't too happy with that <laughs> um and you know and so so the the black shirts come from that that group in uh in in Italy so th- th- this is a a, a take off of that the brown shirts now and um you know Mussolini was was one of those guys that was trying to take down the government over there too so here we have uh after Hitler gets arrested and uh and then he he comes back out and uh so so Germany still they're still shackled by the demands of that Versailles Treaty and I mean it, it's billions hundreds of billions of dollars that they were supposed to pay and then uh the depression comes in men lost their jobs or they struggled to provide uh for their own families let alone meet the the outrageous reparations so Hitler's arguments seemed to make more sense. So the the branchers became a lure for the embittered unemployment unemployed. So in 1931, Hitler he appointed Ernst Röhm, and uh, this guy has to be you know was one of his confidants. He was the head of the um, the SA. This is the the brown shirts. Um, the, Röhm was a fanatical Nazi who who had been a, a party member since its earliest days in 1919, and during its first in, incarnation as the German Workers Party he was also like i said one of hitler's closest friends and allegedly the only person who the future dictator addressed using the informal german do in conversation and who in return was one of the few people who allowed was allowed to address hitler by his first name hmm. and um so hitler w- was then appointed chancellor by the president von hindenburg in 1933 partly in the hopes that the more level-headed figures in the government would be able to control him and uh, and his mob supporters. <clears throat> it's kind of like they give they might give Bernie Sanders a spot just uh, in uh, if Biden wins into the you know <laughs> into the the cabinet or something to control the mob. Yeah, Ruby, because the the Antifa is ba- and Black Lives Matter. They're basically uh, under under Bernie Sanders. Yeah. This is his thug army so the democrats are going to want to play nice with bernie yeah he's already cozying up to biden you know he's he's already he's he's telling his his constituents that this uh you know i've got him under control i got you know bernie's already leaning our way so hmm. you know um so rom uh, and the radical uh, brown shirt leaders they they things were still not progressing rapidly enough and they pressed hitler to move towards total control Von Hindenburg also established conservative politicians, as well as heads of the German army, saw that the brown shirts as nothing but a group of violent thugs, albeit one that posed a considerable threat to the extremely fragile rule of law in the republic. But in uh, 1934, these liter- leaders had had enough, and army uh, officers presented Hitler with an ultimatum. Either he brings the, the, the brown shirts to heel, or they would stage a military coup and oust him from power altogether Mm. Jess so Hitler was pretty shrewd shrewd enough to understand that he can never fully consolidate his grip on the German country without the support of the army the actual army and he recognized that the brown shirts they were becoming increasingly useless at their main job to intimidate and they were becoming kind of unnecessary as more people were already uh, you know conceding to Hitler's uh, commands so he decided to betray his most fanatical supporters in ruthless pursuit of his own best interest. And so um, the brown shirts, they were ferociously anti-Semitic. Uh, and so what happened on June 30th, 1934? Hitler old ordered the political soldiers of the Nazi party, known as the SS, to carry out a blood purge of the brown shirts. Mm. So Hitler turned against them the people that he used to put him in power. During what would be called historically the Night of the Long Knives, the, the uh, brown shirt leader, who was already assembled at the Bavarian Hotel for a banquet, they were instead sent to a firing squad by Hitler in the Munich prison. And uh, these uh, brown shirts that were once again faithful to Hitler, put him in power, They were ripped from their beds and shot in cold blood, sometimes along with spouses and family members. And Hitler was determined to eliminate anybody who would pose any potential threat to his own position in the future as the Fuhrer of Germany. And as for Rahm himself, that was Hitler's right-hand man, Mm -hmm. like that was his 
you know, his best bud, Mm -hmm. he was taken to a prison cell and killed with a pistol. And the official death toll of the Night of the Long Knives is listed as 85 people, but other historians estimated as high as 400 people by the by the same accounts. And uh, this reminds me of uh, what Hitler did also to the Jews. It was called, you know, Kristallnacht, the Night of the Broken Glass. When again on on the night where he turned on the Jews violently, and so once Hitler had basically whacked away the brown shirts that had put him in power, his complete Hitler had complete control over Germany. It became absolute, and now the world was well on its way to its most devastating war, World War Two. Ruben, yeah, and so you know after this, um, the brown shirts, Hit, Hitler's uh, brown shirts, you, you can uh, well. There's other things that go on if you want to go further in history and read about the drugs the Nazis used to help fuel their early uh, their early rise. But it's, you know, they 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 all demonize uh, yep. a certain group of, uh, you know, the, whether it be the police or the, in this case, the you know, the the army. And after World War One, they had been they had been decimated. So they were down to about 100,000 people. That's how this brown shirts could kind of take over because. The German army had been pretty much decimated. They had to, they had to rise back up to power. But uh, we're gonna we're gonna go into something until Antifa and what they're doing, and you can see the parallel. And, yep. and uh, you want, you don't want to miss this. Jesus nine one one. Be right back. This is Terry Barber. I want to thank you for supporting Virgin Most Powerful Radio. And here's an easy way to support us by going to smile.amazon.com and type in Catholic Resource Center or Virgin Most Powerful Radio. And when you log in your Amazon account and you purchase products, a portion of it will go right back in supporting Virgin Most Powerful Radio. And it doesn't cost you a dime. I want to thank you ahead of time because that supports us year-round. May God bless you and your family. How does the baby move in your tummy? How does the baby eat? Can the baby hear me? How did the baby get in there? Wow, a pregnancy can sure generate a lot of questions, but what's important is that a baby is a baby, inside and out of the womb, not just after birth, but nine months before, at conception. That's right, every baby is a miracle. Hello, my name is Marianne Kuharski. I'm the director of Pro-Life Across America. If you know someone who is pregnant or in need of alternatives or assistance or would like to support the work of Pro-Life Across America, please visit our website at prolifeacrossamerica.org or better yet, simply dial pound 250 on your cell phone and say the key word pro-life. Pro-Life Across America is non-political and totally educational. A baby's heart is beating 18 days from conception. Pro-Life Across America. Buying or selling your home or your business property? This is Terry Barber. Real Estate for Life underwrites the Terry and Jesse Show. And they can connect you to one of 900 pro-life real estate agents around the world. And when they receive their referral fee, they will give 80% of it to a pro-life organization. Wow, that's 80%. Realestateforlife.org, 877-LIFE-US1. Now, back to Jesus 911. If this call is not an emergency, dial 888 526 2151. Jesus 911. We're doing our part. More, more than ever, Ruben, yeah. what you just said, more than ever. We, yeah, we, we, the, uh, the group that we work with at, uh, over at the cathedral, um, they've, They've got the the term "Our Lady 911 now that they they post on social media. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
That's that's good. Jess, we have a caller on the line. Uh, yeah, let's get him on. From Fresno. I uh, forgot his name. Um, James, are you with us? You're on, caller. Yeah, I'm here, guys. James. Thank you, guys. for thank, Thanks for your show. You're welcome. What's going on, buddy? Hey, I was just kind of going wanting to touch base about the topic you guys are on. I was thinking about this last night. You guys are going over the different types of fanatical Germans that went through in and around before Hitler came to power. And the way the brown shirts were kind of purged. And that was an interesting topic because I was thinking about that last night when I was kind of going over the news topics right now, especially with Pelosi kind of getting purged right now a little bit with her, you know, kind of going over and all these different governors and leaders in our states kind of going and thinking they can do whatever they want. Is that when is it going to come? When's going to come that time when those people are going to eventually get kind of purged from the party because they're not fanatical enough. Mm-hmm. I agree with you. Uh, the, the, the left basically just uses people, and once you're of no use to them, they just discard you. And just like, just like Hitler did with the brown shirts, this is what leftist politicians do to each other all the time. Right now, Bernie Sanders is relevant, but again, you know, everybody, everybody has their day or their expiration date. And like you said, right now, even they're even kind of going after Nancy Pelosi for uh, going to that hair salon and stuff and getting her hair done without a mask. And so, yeah, they're just... Uh, they just use each other to try to climb up the political ladder, but once they have no use for each other, they'll they'll cancel each other out. Ruben, yeah, yeah. I'll let you guys. I'll let you guys keep going on your topic. I'll listen on on, on the radio. I, I I enjoy listening to you in the morning. I feel like I get spiritually armed. I feel like I'm uh, my my bayonets fixed after I listen to you guys in the morning. <laughs> yeah. I tell the guys everywhere around here. I, I just time to fix bayonets now. I time to fix bayonets because, you know, not not only in the in the temporal world but in the spiritual world. We need to be ready for that combat every day. And I appreciate you guys' show, and I, I listen every morning, and I, I feel armed Thanks. with my bayonet after I listen to you guys in the morning. So All thank you again. All right, brother. Jesus. Thank you so much. God bless. All right. Well, well that's exactly what we want to do. Iron sharpens iron. One man sharpens another. Right. Ruben, let's take it down here to the United States. There's an evil organization that we're all aware of because they're in the news every day, Antifa. We want to look at their history, their tactics, their goals of the movement in the United States. Yeah. Uh, because this is exactly what the brown shirts were doing uh, during World War II. Let me give you some quotes here from some of their leaders. Mark Bray from the Antifa Anti Fascist Handbook 2017 says this quote, The only long term solution to the fascist menace is to, and by the way, fascism means a dictator. So they're basically saying that President Trump is a dictator in this country is a dictatorial country, which is not true. It's a two-party system. Uh, we vote here. People aren't, uh, you know, they don't, they don't become president, uh, you know, at the end of a gun. So this is just a false, it's a false label calling the uh, the, U- the U.S. and America fascist and Trump fascist. We're, we're anything, we're the opposite of that because of our constitution. And again, the three, uh, you know, levers of power, executive, legislative, and uh, judicial. Uh, judicial. So it's uh, this uh, Antifa handbook says, the only long-term solution of the fascist menace is to undermine its pillars of strength in society, grounded not only in white supremacy, no, it's grounded in one nation under God, liberty, and e pluribus unum. It says, <clears throat> grounded in not only white supremacy, but also in ableism, heteronormativity, patriarchy, well, that's true, that's nationalism, transphobia, class rule, and many others. A lot of false allegations there. Uh, I like what the former police chief, Bernard Carrick, said about Antifa, former commissioner of the New York City Police Department, said this. They're coming from other cities that cost money. They didn't do this on their own. Somebody's paying for this. What Antifa is doing is they're basically hijacking the black community as their army. They instigate. They antagonize. They get these young black men and women to go out there and do stupid things, and then they disappear off into the sunset. Spot on. We've been saying that for months, Ruben. Here's a third, uh, a third statement here from uh, the Alliance for Global Justice, which is known as AFGF. AFGJ. The coordinated violence raises questions about how Antifa is financed. The Alliance for Global Justice is an organizing group that serves as a fiscal sponsor to numerous radical left-wing initiatives, according to Influence Watch, a research group that collects data on advocacy organizations, foundations, and donors. So who's funding Antifa? Here it goes. The Open Societies Foundation, that's George Soros' nonprofit, 
Tides Foundation, ARCA Foundation, Serdna Foundation, Public Welfare Foundation, and Brightwater Fund have all made contributions to Alliance for Global Justice, which funds Antifa. And the last bullet, that I'll throw it over to you, Ruben. One of the groups funded by the Alliance for Global Justice is called Refuse Fascism, which is an offshoot of the Radical Communist Party. And the group states, the, the group slogan states, this, this system cannot be reformed. It must be overthrown. Ruben, we are living right now full-blown communism in our country uh, and this is right now we're in, we're in a death match right now with full blown infiltration of communism. Right. Antifa, it's in uh, in the United States. It's highly networked, well funded, has a clear ideological agenda to subvert often with uh, extreme violence. We've seen that all over the nation. The American political system with the ultimate aim of replacing capitalism with communism. And the number one goal is to get uh, President Trump out of there, you know, um, and, and you you know what? It's I was thinking about this. I don't know if you heard in the news that uh, that liberal mayor in Portland, you know, he was backing these guys uh, that were trying to overtake the the courthouse in Portland, and so he went out there and marched with them uh, one night, and he got gassed by the federal <laughs> guys. Well, <clears throat> you know, they just burned his apartment complex down. So what? <clears throat> yeah, so they Whoa. they're pissed off at him because he's like you just said earlier. They're not liberal enough. He hasn't done enough to defund the police. He hasn't done enough to get the, you know, the cops out of there. And and so, you know what? So they turned on him. They they turned on him. That just shows you that if Bernie, I mean, excuse me, if uh, Biden was to win, th- this stuff is not going to stop. Th- they don't care about a particular person in the they just want to overthrow <clears throat> you know, capitalism uh, and what we have here going on. They want just they don't they want no rules. No holds barred, basically, like the old MMA used to say. No holds barred. Uh, un- open up the prisons. They don't want. They want the pol- the police to be gone. They they want to do basically what they did in Chaz and Chop or over in Seattle, and we saw how that didn't work. That's right. Okay. So and, go yeah. Ahead. Okay. President Trump recently, Ruben, announced that the American government would des- designate Anifa a militant anti-fascist movement a terrorist organization due to the violence that it's erupted at the George Floyd protests across the country. And uh, so it's, it's a now, I guess it's in the federal regulation. Here's the way, the way it's defined in federal law. Terrorism, an unlawful use of force and violence against persons or property to intimidate or coerce a government, the civilian population, or any segment in furtherance of political or social objectives. That's precisely defines Antifa and Black Lives Matter. Perfect definition. They're a terrorist organization. We just got to put teeth into this. Uh, President Trump has to win, and we have to send the military out there. I'm saying the military out there and start making mass arrests because we're dealing against a military organiz- a paramilitary organization right now. And uh, our, our cowardly blue city, uh, blue state uh, politicians will not let the police do their job. So it's going to have to take federal involvement if, when Trump wins. He's going to have to intervene in these states and save these states from uh, from uh, being overrun by Antifa. Yeah. Well, hopefully, Jesse, when <clears throat> when things we, we finally get our bearings in and we come back to our, our senses down the road, <clears throat> someone's going to someone's going to divulge how this was a collusion by all the liberal governors and mayors across the nation. Mm. They have they're on the same page. They're all they're all trying to uh, to keep people locked down in their homes keep the violence going so that it doesn't bode well for Trump and and keep this going through the election so that they can uh take over and and do their thing. <clears throat> so yeah. yeah. So um go ahead Jess, I got to clear my throat. <clears throat> okay. Uh so the American media outlets they're very sympathetic to Antifa. <clears throat> In fact, you see night after night room when they're jumping to their defense saying, "Oh, the peaceful protest." As you see in the background uh, from, from this reporter, buildings burning down, people running around with AR-15s, uh, punching uh, you know, Trump supporters in the face. And night after night, you hear the mainstream media outlet saying the uh, peaceful protest from uh, Antifa. Mm-hmm. Uh, the fact of the matter is Antifa is a highly networked, well-funded, and has a clear ideological agenda to subvert often with extreme violence, 
the American political system with the ultimate aim of replacing capitalism with communism. And in the U.S., Antifa's immediate aim is make no bones about this. This is why we have to get 10 more people to vote. All, all of us that are voting for Trump, get 10 more people that have never voted to go vote. Are, because their aim is to remove President Trump from office. And let me tell you something. If Trump loses, all I'll tell you in the words of the Spaniard in the movie The Gladiator, the, the left is going to unleash hell. They're going to unleash hell on people of faith and people that are conservative. Absolutely. You think that you're going to be able to go to just to go to church on Sunday? Uh, it's. I think it's going to be. Uh, They've all difficult. said this is the new normal. Everybody on the left, get yep. used to this is the new normal. They'll be burning down churches, and 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 the the leaders from the party they won't protect us. They're not gonna. They don't believe in religious freedom anyway. So, so they burn down a Catholic church. They're going to say so what? So, you know, it like um, I think I've heard you say uh, other times that we may be going to the underground church. You know, if this <laughs> yeah if this happens. So, so, you know, Ru- <clears throat> yeah, it's difficult uh, precisely to determine the size of Antifa movement in the United States. The so to- so-called anti-fascist of, of Reddit, the, the premier and anti-fascist community on the social media platform. Reddit has approximately 60,000 members. The oldest Antifa group in the America, the Portland, Oregon based Rose city Antifa has more than 30,000 Twitter followers wow. <clears throat> and 20,000 Facebook followers not all of whom are necessary supporters. Um, there's a group called It's Going Down, a media platform for anarchists, anti-fascists, and autonomous anti-capitalists. has 85,000 Twitter followers and 30,000 Facebook followers. And I, I, I can't think that they're all, you know, those are all the soldiers. I think these are just ill-informed youngsters that are following. Because a lot of them are just youngsters, Jesse. Uh, we were out at a Trump rally um, this past weekend, and I was out there with your brother. Most of them are Caucasian youngsters. Yeah, there was a a, fa- a, a a group of Black Lives Matter out there, like on one corner, about twenty of them. It was one black person in the whole group. The rest were all <laughs> young white people. Same with here. Same here, Ruben. On Thursdays, we have rallies out here, and across the street, Black Lives Matter. Uh, probably about 30, 40 young people. I think like one or two blacks. You yeah. know. <laughs> oh boy. So th- they're. They're letting these little uh, young college white people uh, go get in trouble and, and promote their, their uh, agenda. We'll be right back. Jesus 911. Jesus, help us. Help the Helpless, a Minnesota St. Paul nonprofit organization chaired by Father of Tear and volunteers, is humbly asking you for your kind support to help the poor and the handicapped children in India and Ecuador. Through financial support from the help of the helpless benefactors, the children are provided with clothing, food, education, shelter, and the teachings of the Catholic Church. The mission is to help children thrive and become self-sufficient young adults leading productive lives. We also provide aid to poor families in Ecuador with food baskets, medicines, medical assistance, and help with funeral needs for the deceased. The work in India is done by Father Antonio's organization, St. Mary's. In Ecuador, the work is being done by the Servant Sisters of the Home of Mother. You can call us at 877-762-8857. To learn more, please visit our website, www.helpthehelpless.org. God bless you. Join VMPR live on YouTube September 12, 2020 for our latest free conference, The Ultimate Challenge. This exclusive virtual event will feature a brand new talk from Jesse Romero, How Apologetics Brought Me Back to Faith. Plus, never-before-broadcast video presentations from Dr. Scott Hahn, Father Mitch Pacwa, and the late, great Father Benedict Groeschel. Go to vmpr.org to register now and get ready to face the ultimate challenge. 
buying or selling your home or your business property? This is Terry Barber. Real Estate for Life underwrites The Terry and Jesse Show. And they can connect you to one of 900 pro-life real estate agents around the world. And when they receive their referral fee, they will give 80% of it to a pro-life organization. Wow, that's 80%. Realestateforlife.org, 877-LIFE-US-1. Now, back to Jesus 911. If this call is not an emergency, dial 888-526-2151. Jesus 911, if you stay ready, you don't have to get ready. We're giving you some intel so that you can be ready. So uh, you see what's coming up, uh, down the pike here. It's, uh, it's all over America, this, uh, this radical group, Antifa. And um, we're Ruben. Uh, let me just mention one thing. You know, you know who warned us about this? Our Lady of Fatima. Okay, I'm just going to put it. Yeah, right. She warned us about this, that we were going to be dealing with communism, and uh, not right. enough people took heed to her message. Absolutely, uh, including those in the top of the church, lay people not praying the daily rosary. But uh, this was a warning from Our Lady about the infiltration of communism into this into the world absolutely and so and who else warned us bella dodd okay bella dodd says hey this is 1954 communism has already infiltrated the west and the catholic church and then there was another ruben remember that senator that they demonized the name was uh joe mccarthy back yep. in the 1950s yeah okay he was already talking about he was a wisconsin senator a catholic and he was already telling us that uh, the communist uh, Soviet Union spies are at, they're at various levels of the government. Uh, he said they've infiltrated Hollywood producers. They've infiltrated uh, directors, studios. And remember, he was demonized, Ruben. The mainstream media went after him, and they, they, they just destroyed him, basically saying this guy's a nut, you know, because he had a project called the Venona Project. And, uh, and, and McCarthy was basically telling people already back in the 50s, guys, these guys are already taking over our education, Hollywood, a lot of the political leaders. They're Marxist, and they've already infiltrated. They're in academia. They're in Hollywood. They're in Congress. And guess what, Ruben? Uh, Senator McCarthy was absolutely right. Yep, that's right. Hey, Germany has a big population of these these thugs out there, these, uh, these left-wing uh, nuts. And... Uh, <clears throat> the violent left-wing agitators are predominantly male between 20 to 1 and 24 years of age, usually unemployed. And according to uh, one source here, it says that 92% of them still live with their parents. Oh, imagine that. <laughs> a- a- anecdotal evidence suggests Mom, that- Dad, I'm going to go right right now. I'll see yeah. you in a couple of hours. <laughs> yeah. M- m- um, this is, most Antifa members in the United States have a similar socioeconomic profile. And, um, you know, since they're getting paid for their agitation, you know, for the, the, the anarchy that they're committing across the nation, you know, they're they're unemployed. So they, that's why they can – none of them have jobs. That's why they're out there in the daytime, all, nighttime, all, all hours of the day and night. So, you know, it doesn't, it, it doesn't surprise me. Anyway, um, you know, and these are being funded by organizations like the, that we just mentioned, Open Society Foundations founded by George Soros. And what they're using – to avoid detection is these, uh, you know, social media stuff like encrypted social media platforms such as Signal and Telegram Messenger to communicate and coordinate their activities, sometimes across state lines. So it's not surprisingly that the U.S. the Justice Department current is currently investigating individuals linked to Antifa as a step to unmasking the broader organization. And if we can follow the money, Jess, that's where we're going to get to the top of the heads so we can cut them off. Absolutely. So what are the historical origin, origins of American Antifa? In the U.S., Antifa's ideology, their tactics and goals, they're nothing new. Mm-hmm. They're borrowed almost entirely from Antifa groups in Europe, uh, where, so-called, where the so-called anti-fascist groups in one form or another, they've been active for almost 100 years. And in Europe, the aims and objectives of the American Antifa movement can be traced back to a single overarching century-long ideological war against the fascist ideals of capitalism and Christianity. That's what they hate. This is what the Antifa movement wants to replace 
with a revolutionary socialist alternative, which includes, again, defunding the police as one of their party planks. But the first so-called anti-fascist group in the U.S. was the American League Against War and Fascism. This was established in 1933 by the Communist Party USA. So the American League Against War, which claimed to oppose fascism in Europe, was actually dedicated to subverting and overthrowing the U.S. government. And in testimony to the U.S. Congress in 1953, CPUSA leader Manning Johnson revealed that the American Party had been instructed by the Communist International in the 1930s to set up the American, American League against war and fascism. Here's what they said in their own words, close, or here's what leader Manning Johnson said, quote, close, quote, as a cover to attack our government, our social system, our leaders, used as a cover to attack our law enforcement agencies and to build up mass hate against them, <clears throat> used as a cover to undermine national security, used as a cover to defend communists, the sworn enemies of our great heritage, used as a cover for preparing millions of people ideologically and organizationally for the overthrow of the United States government. This is what we're looking at right now. And Ruben, there's a lot of precursors to this that erupted in the 60s. You want to share some yeah. of those? Yeah. The, uh, one movement was the Black Panthers, uh, a revolutionary political organization. It was established in 1966 in October by a Marxist college students in Oakland, California, the group advocated for the use of violence and guerrilla tactics to overthrow the U.S. government. Um, there's a historian, uh, Robin Spencer, noted that uh, Black Panther leaders were deeply influenced by the United Front of the Working Class Against Fascism. And um, a report by George Dimitrov delivered at the 7th World Congress of the Communist International in July and August of 1935. He, they quote, uh, says, By 1969, the Panthers began to use fascism as a theoretical framework to critique the U.S. political economy, they define fascism as a power of finance capital, which manifests itself not only in banks, trusts, and monopolies, but also as the human property of finance capital. The avaricious businessman, the demagogic politician, and the racist pig cop. Hmm. Um, and so in, in 1969, the Black Panthers organized an anti-fascist conference called the United Front Against Fascism attended by nearly 5,000 activists. And they said, stated there that the, the Panthers hoped to create a national force with a common revolutionary ideology and political program which answers the basic desires and needs of all people in fascist, capitalist, and racist America. See, they're already planting that seed of racism right there. And um, Ruben, yeah, that's all. Well, there's, there's the Solinsky methods. You, yeah. you just it's name calling ad hominems. You demonize your opponent. In other words, all you got to do is just look at somebody and say, "You're a fascist. You're a fascist. You're a fascist. You're a racist." Yeah. I mean, it, and if you keep repeating a lie often enough, people around are going to start saying, "Well, maybe Jess Romero is a fascist and a racist." They've called him that fifty times, you know, yeah. uh, in the last two hours. That's what they've done to Trump, you know. Exactly. Yeah. That's the point that I'm making. Yeah. That's exactly what it's been nonstop for three and a half years. Yeah. yeah. And you and you look at his history. He's got pictures with you know great <laughs> uh, blacks of uh, uh, Muhammad Ali and. He's been on the Oprah show, and he's he's Mike Tyson, Jesse Jackson, uh, Sh Al Sharpton. I'm not I'm not including them as the great Americans, but by the way, yeah, he just no. What I'm saying is this is uh, Ruben. This guy, he was friends with everybody yeah. before he became president. Even he was even dating two black girls. So how could he be a racist? You know. <laughs> anyway, um, so th uh, there's a uh, Black Panthers. They uh, there's a, a guy by name Spencer. He, he detailed the plan by the Black Panthers, and he, and he wrote that uh, they proposed amending city charters to establish autonomous community-based police departments for every city, which would be accountable to local neighborhood police control councils, compromise of 15 elected community members. They launched the National Committees of Combat Fascism, NCCF, a multiracial nationwide network to organize for community control of the police. Kind of sounds like what was going on in Seattle. Ruben, as, we're, as you're looking at the history of the Black Panthers, every, all their projects or all their, their, their basically uh, party platform is being, uh, is being played out right now by Antifa and Black Lives Matter. They're doing the ex they're, it's a template. Yeah. It's a cut and paste. Hey, Black Panthers, what did you guys do? 
This is what we're going to do now, 40 years later. Well, even with the, you know, you see the T-shirts, they got the black hand, you know, because uh, if you remember the 68 Olympics in Mexico, the, that's right. The, yeah. the, the runner, he got on the podium after he won and uh, first place and another guy won third place. The Americans, they were bl- black and they put their hands up and they, the, the black power sign, you know. That's and right. um, that's what's on these uh, BLM, you know, T-shirts and, and and posters and stuff that they're putting out. So, hey, Ruben, I just got a little note from my wife here. It says that right now on the Internet, it's, there's an advertisement that says Biden for president mandate mask. So the advertisement is saying that if Biden wins mandatory mask, uh, probably for the next four years. Yeah. And so it's it's you, funny. You, I, I, my, my wife is just she's an anti mask woman. She goes into the stores and she doesn't wear a mask and people are looking at her and she and it's, she just like whistles and looks up and down the aisles and like she just doesn't look. She goes, don't make she's already got it down. She goes, don't make eye contact with anybody. Just look up and down like if you're looking for something and stuff and like, you know, like if you're really busy shopping and people are like, uh, uh, ma'am, ma'am. And she just shines them on. She just completely uh, uh, ma'am, ma'am. She completely shines them on, uh, uh, but you don't have, a, oh, I don't have, a, oh, okay, no problem. And she just keeps walking up and down. She just completely shines off on the mass police, and it's hilarious as being in public with her. Wow. <laughs> uh, you know, it, just the other day, on the on first, uh, I was with my, my dad. We went to, to see the, the cemetery to, see, to visit my mom. Um, anyway, I, I was wearing my, the shirt I was wearing on the show that day, you know, um, you know, we the people. It says we are, are pissed off, and uh, we're sitting there eating at an outside food establishment, and uh, uh, a older gentleman, black guy, probably well, probably my age, but or or maybe just a tad older. He was he was uh, w- walking with a cane, and he's doing his bebop walking, and and he's on the phone, and and he spots me, and he says he says, oh, there's one of them right there, right now. You know, <laughs> he's looking right at me. He starts. Ma- Jesse starts mad dogging me, and, and and I pointed out to my dad, "Look at this guy, man!" And, and so he kept walking, and he kept turning around, and you know, throwing me dirty looks. And I'm like, "Geez, you, he he doesn't realize that I got my head on a swivel, Jess, and uh, I'm not gonna be, you know, blindsided. I, you know, I got I'm covering my dad's six, you know, and I, I've got a, you know how we position ourselves. You probably still do it. Oh yeah, oh yeah. You position yourself with your back <laughs> to a wall, and you, yeah. you you don't let people creep up on you, man. That's a cardinal sin in in our line of work. That's right. <laughs> yeah, it, uh, yeah. That's just, you know it's funny. Uh, <laughs> yeah, okay, well we're talking yeah. about Antifa and uh, where they took their their party platform from and their tactics. It comes from Europe. It comes from the Black Panther Party. Will continue. Jesus 911. Right. Lord God, come to our assistance. Virgin Most Powerful, pray for us. Hi, this is Jesse Romero from the Terry and Jesse Show, also from Jesus 911. Let's face it, we all need to use the internet, but we need screen accountability. Why? Pornography is a huge problem, especially on the internet. And every time we tap into the internet, we get bombarded with images and temptations that degrade our humanity. So we need Covenant Eye to block these pornographic sites and advertisements from infiltrating our lives. Covenant Eyes helps us take custody of our eyes and custody of our intellect. So I recommend you go to CovenantEyes.com and type in the promo code, the NPR, to support the network. Protect yourself and your family from the eminent threats on the internet. www.CovenantEyes.com code VMPR live porn free. Thank you for listening to Virgin Most Powerful Radio. Thank you. God bless you. Keep the faith. In 1 Corinthians 13, 13, St. Paul says, So there abide faith, hope, and love, these three. According to St. Ignatius of Antioch, faith is the beginning and love is the end. And God is the two of them brought into unity. Then comes everything else that makes up a Christian. 
May God grant that we may attain all the virtues that make for authentic followers of His Son. Buying or selling your home or your business property? This is Terry Barber. Real Estate for Life underwrites The Terry and Jesse Show. And they can connect you to one of 900 pro-life real estate agents around the world. And when they receive their referral fee, they will give 80% of it to a pro-life organization. Wow, that's 80%. Realestateforlife.org, 877-LIFE-US-1. Now, back to Jesus 911. If this call is not an emergency, dial 888-526-2151. Jesus 911. Two man car, we are 108 and we are uh, going through some stuff on, on Antifa, giving you some some food for thought so that you be prepared. You're not going to you're going to realize that what's going on today has already been this is goes back many years of what's been going on over the the course of uh, our, our our well this the twenty third what the thirties I, I think we went back to the thirties when this stuff was going on yeah oh boy yeah Ruben l- l- I'm gonna go right to the bottom of this where it talks about uh, but a lot of a, a lot of statements on Antifa by a lot of different people <clears throat> I want I want to go where it's uh, starting where it says uh, Higgins said and these are veteran national Security correspondent Bill Gertz recently reported that the Antifa movement began planning to foment a nationwide anti-government insurgency as early as November 2019 when the presidential campaign season kicked off in earnest. And former National Security Council staff member Rich Higgins said the following about Antifa. He said this, quote, Antifa's actions represent a hard break with the long tradition of a peaceful political process in the U.S. Their Marxist ideology seeks not only to influence elections in the short term, but to destroy the use of elections as the determining factor in political legitimacy. Second point Higgins makes. Antifa's goal is nothing less than fomenting the revolution, civil war, and silencing Americans anti-communist. That's us. Their labeling of Trump supporters and patriots as Nazis and racists is standard fare for left-wing communist groups. Hmm. Third point he makes. Antifa is currently functioning as the command and control of the riots, which are themselves the overt utilization of targeted violence against targets such as stores, capitalism, monuments, history, and churches. God. Notice the threefold attack of Antifa. Stores, which represent capitalism, monuments which represent history and churches which represent god this is not by coincidence these are strategic ruben yeah i don't i don't uh i don't know exactly where you're at on this but uh under what title just so we uh, it's toward the end of the article towards the bottom of the article okay. where the next one says joe myers <laughs> okay well, joe myers a former defense i want to just give some of the quotes from all the people uh regarding antifa right you just, see it yeah uh no 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 um um i just wanted to point out something that the, back in 2018, they tried to uh, try to pass a bill to uh, get these. It's in 2018. The Republican representative Dan Donovan of New York introduced the bill HR 6054 to t- unmasking Antifa for, uh, Act of 2018. It calls for prison sentences up to 15 years for anyone who, while wearing a mask or disguise, injures, oppresses, threatens, or intimidates someone else who is exercising any right of privilege guaranteed under the U.S. Constitution. The bill remains stalled in the House of Representatives. And so we got to get Nancy out of there and take over that house so this thing can right. pass. And again, there's the mask. The mask. They want to keep us masked up so they can continue their their charade with, um, with you know, uh, so that they can't be identified. That's the whole point. Uh, go ahead, Jeff. Yeah, that makes sense, Ruben. That absolutely makes sense. I want to go where, where it says... Antipas, Antifa's Utopia. That's towards the bottom of the article. Okay. This is, this is kind of the meat of it because we're in our last segment. Antifa's Utopia is what? It says here. Meanwhile, in Seattle, Washington, Antifa radicals, protesters from Black Lives Matter, and members of the anti-capitalist John Brown Gun Club seized control of the East Precinct neighborhood and established a six-square-block autonomous zone. Okay, this is, you know, this is a little bit 
outdated the article, but the fact the point is well made, though. Called the Capitol Hill Autonomous Zone, Jazz. Mm -hmm. Then they renamed it CHOP, which means the Capitol Hill Organized or Occupied Protest. And they had a cardboard sign in front of the police station, uh, and the barricade declared the following, close. You are now leaving the USA, close quote. And the group list issued a list of 30 demands, including the abolition of the Seattle Police Department and court system. Ruben, you sent me a text of a Seattle police officer, mm-hmm. and he said, uh, it's on my phone, it's an incredible yeah. indictment on the city managers. He says, we've been abandoned. Right. He, yeah, he says, basically, I'm looking for a new line of work. He was a former he says, LAPD officer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He goes, we have no backing here. We've been completely abandoned and thrown under the bus by our city managers. It was a very sad, uh, a very sad narrative that he wrote. I could see just the, uh, I mean the broken heart that he must feel given it because it's a calling to be a cop or somebody in the service. It's a calling uh, to to go out there and to put your, put your life on the line. Uh, You're not going to get rich. You're going to pay your bills. But the fact of the matter is he's just seen the criminal justice system in Seattle, the the city that he chooses to live in. It's just completely has fallen apart. Yeah. And the police chief, Carmen Best, she stepped down as well. She's, she's, you know, she was a good woman, but uh, she's not getting any backing from that liberal mayor and governor. I think she's a black police chief, too. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Ruben, here's Antifa in their own words for the article. It says Antifa in its own words. OK, here's from their handbook, the, yeah. their, uh, the anti-fascist handbook from Antifa. It says the only long term solution to the fasc- fascist menace is to undermine its pillars of strength in society grounded not only in white supremacy, but in. But also in ableism, heteronormativity, patriarchy, nationalism, transphobia, class rule, and many others. Mm -hmm. The long-term goal, the long-term goal points to the tension that exists in defining anti-fascism. Because at a certain point, destroying fascism, which means dictator, is real is really about promoting a revolutionary socialist alternative. It is. And then a former, the former mayor of Seattle, Nikita Oliver, says, we need to align ourselves with a global struggle that acknowledges that the United States plays a role in racialized capitalism, and uh, racialized capitalism is built upon patriarchy, white supremacy, and classism. And uh, One of the founders of BLM. One of the founders, Patrice Cullors, the co-founder of the Black Lives Matter, she says this, man. Trump not only needs to not be in office in November, but he should resign now. Trump needs to be out of office. He's not fit for office. And so what we are going to push for is, is to move to get Trump out. While we're also going to continue to push and pressure Joe Biden around his policies and relationship to policing and criminalization. That's going to be important, but our goal is to get Trump out. So they're, they're going to be, uh, they're going to be hammering Bernie, uh, Joe Biden as well. If he gets, they're going to ha- they're going to push around sleepy Joe. Yeah. They're going to be pushing him around. <laughs> Here's what Rose City Antifa tweeted. They tweeted, quote, as anti-fascists, we know that our fight is not against organized fascism, but also against the capitalist state and the police that protect it. Another world is possible. These people remind me of like Don Quixote fighting, you know, windmills, mm. you know, the thinking that they're fighting, you know, real dragons or real monsters. <laughs> They're, this is not a fascist country. They don't understand what fascism is. We don't have a dictator. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we elect everybody in office, and they can be unelected as well. They can be impeached. Uh, yeah, these people are, they need to live under a country like Sharia law so they can see fascism. You know, dictators under imams or, or, mm-hmm. or, or Middle Eastern strongmen. Or maybe they should move to Mexico and live under uh, the fascist cartels who basically run Mexico. You know, these Latin American strongmen, uh, the, these mo- these Caucasian millennials have no idea what a dictator is, Ruben. Nope, nope. And uh, we, the people, are, like I, my shirt said, are getting pissed off. There's going to be, uh, we're already seeing a, a semi, you know, civil Pushback. war going on. Yeah. You know, that yes. one pro, that one uh, uh, conservative guy, He's uh, he was a Christian man who was killed in Portland the other night. And... Uh, this is the, you God know, have mercy on his soul. Yeah, absolutely. The Seattle um, Antifa's anti-fascist added, this is the revolution. This is our time and we will make no excuses for the terror. And then there's another group called the PNW Youth Liberation Front. Um, they said the only way to win a, a world without police, prisons, borders, etc. is to destroy the oppressive systems 
which we are currently caught in. We must continue the fight against the state, imperialism, capitalism, white supremacy, patriarchy, and so on if we ever want to be free. A pamphlet distributed at the Autonomous Zone in Seattle. The idea that the working class can control our own lives without states, governments, or borders is also called anarchism. But how do we get from our current capitalist society to future anarchistic communist one? That's the question. In order to destroy the current order, there will need to be a revolution, a time of great up evil here's one more it's a one here's towards the bottom it says an an antifa agitator from new york comments on the american flag oh, yeah. uh he says this th- that blank is a blanking cloth with colors on it Jeez. it doesn't live or breathe and is nothing but a representation any black latin or native person looking at that thing the flag being respected should be offended at that flag that represents genocide, rape, slavery, and colonization. Ruben, I'm telling you, these millennials can only learn this from a public school system, from a from a Marxist, liberal, progressive public school system. That's the only place where they can be indoctrinated. Our, our kids are not being educated. They're being re-educated in Marxist communism. When you hear statements like this, from a young person, you know that this guy has no idea what a fascist country really looks like, and he has no idea what it means to live under a dictator. So what's the, what, what are the plans? Well, I'll tell you what the plans are. We've got to elect President Trump and Pence for another four years because he's already designated a terrorist organization. I, I say and 12, I know, years. Ru- 12 years, Jess. <laughs> four for Trump and then eight for Pence. Yeah. And Ruben, and then... Once he gets elected in for another term, watch what's going to happen. Right now, he he can't do nothing because the elections are so close. Right. He has no backing from the blue cities and the blue state uh, Democrats. But once he wins, watch what's going to happen to Antifa. Same thing that's going like, to happen. Same thing that he did to ISIS. Yep. He's going to wipe them out, Ruben. He already got got rid of uh, the, 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 the statue uh, vandals. You know what he did? Ten years executive order for anybody who destroys a statue. All of a sudden, you notice no statues are being ripped off around the country no more. These young kids are saying, I don't want to do ten years for knocking down a statue. Mm-hmm. Watch what's going to happen. We've got to reelect this man. We've got to pray our rosaries every day. We've got to live in a state of grace we got to stay close to our Lord Jesus Christ, and uh, we've got to evangelize. we got to win souls for Christ, and we've got to uh, vote for the most pro-life president that this country has ever seen, Ruben. Amen, Amen Jesse. Yeah, stay close to Our Lady and that, that rosary. And so uh, um, I won't be out the, at the cathedral this Saturday, or excuse me, this Sunday, but uh, they'll be out there. I just can't make it this, this weekend, but uh, go on out. And uh, they're, this uh, Saturday, or I keep seeing Saturday, it's, this Sunday is the uh, they're going to be praying the the rosary in Latin. Okay, so uh, three decades and and a, a bunch of other prayers, and uh, you want to be out there. You want to be praying for our nation, praying for our president, praying Amen. for that the bishops come to their senses and they open the churches up fully. Um, you know, we are at a difficult time, but uh, we're going to get through this. You know, there's going to be there's going to be peace, and we have to pray that uh, that the Pope consecrates Russia to. Her Immaculate Heart and Mary. All right, that's it. We're 10 7. You've been listening to Jesus 911. Stay tuned for Hands On Apologetics with Gary Mashuda. Thank you for joining us. We are out. Out. St. Faustina's Prayer for Priests. Oh, my Jesus, I beg thee on behalf of the whole church, grant it love and the light of thy spirit, and give power to the words of priests, so that hardened hearts might be brought to repentance and return to thee, O Lord. Lord, give us holy priests. Thou thyself maintain them in holiness. O divine and great high priest, may the power of thy mercy accompany them everywhere and protect them from the devil's traps and snares, which are continually being set for the souls of priests. May the power of thy mercy, O Lord, shatter and bring to naught all that might tarnish the sanctity of priests. For thou canst do all things. Amen. Virgin Most Powerful, pray for us.